So at first, I would like to explain what the letters KYC and AML mean. KYC means know your customer identification and AML means anti-money laundering. And these are regulations that have uh, been set in order basically by an international financial order that was founded after the First World War and then after the Second World War in uh, the conference in Bretton Woods, where 44, the 44 allied nations who won the Second World War came together and decided upon regulations um, to basically control the financial future of the, the, the world. Um, the problem with that was it basically excluded all, almost all African nations and other nations. And um, these regulations um, have been extended over the years. So especially after the uh, attacks on the uh, World Trade Center in New York in 2001, the U.S. Um, took on new regulations to combat terrorism. And in that sense, the regulations got tighter and tighter over the years. And it means basically that today 1.7 billion people are excluded from this financial system because these regulations trickle down to all countries in the world. Because as soon as a country it is in need of uh, a loan or something, and it wants to get it from the International Monetary Fund, then they have to uh, fulfill um, rules and regulations that come with that loan. And many of these regulations are uh, banking regulations. So you can't have a bank account, for instance, if you don't own an ID, if you don't have um, your passport or something, then you will not be able to get a bank account. And the same uh, goes for regulated cryptocurrency exchanges. So migrants and people who live in rural areas or who don't have enough money to get uh, to be like a good customer for the bank are excluded from the financial system. And how do these regulations now restrict our privacy or infringe upon our privacy? So basically they make us the target for crimes and they put us in danger and they take away all our pri privacy. And um, I mean, many people are saying, I have nothing to hide, uh, I, I'm okay. Uh, that they collect all data because I'm not doing anything wrong. This is, of course, true for many of us, but it's also true for human rights activists, for political activists, for the whole civil society in that sense, um, and for people who are part of uh, minority groups that are being discriminated against. Because in a lot of authoritarian ruled countries, these people need privacy. And the more we are all looking that we have privacy, the more these people are protected too. That goes, for instance, for human rights activists. So if you plan or if you work for more freedom in your country, um, then you are the target or you will for sure be the target of uh, the ruling people in power because they want to oppress you and they don't want you to overthrow the government. And so your privacy is very important uh, for your security, for your life and safety. And um, in Bitcoin, it's important to know that every transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain is traceable. So if you send someone Bitcoin, then for instance, the person can look up the source of your transaction and see how many Bitcoin you have in your wallet. And if you're a little bit more sophisticated or you have access to software that does blockchain surveillance, then you can get a lot of information about what and where someone has spent their Bitcoin. And that puts people in danger 
Because for instance, if someone from a country in Europe sends Bitcoin to someone in, let's say, Zambia, uh, for any political movement or donating towards Bitcoin education, and the government doesn't want that, then they could look up the Bitcoin, where the Bitcoin come from. And if they have the KYC data from this person, from the sender, then they know who it is. And that's happening when you're using a regulated exchange where you need to show your ID and where you're being registered. Because as soon as you send the Bitcoin you bought there to someone else, to another Bitcoin address, the new, the, the, the recipient's Bitcoin address and uh, is connected with your name, basically, that you sent this transaction to the recipient, which puts everyone in danger. And that's the reason why it's a shame that uh, software and tools that are being used to protect our privacy, to basically hide these traces on the blockchain, are uh, the, the, the goal or the, the target of legal attacks at the moment. So for instance, um, the developer of Tornado Cash, which is a software with which you can upgrade the privacy of your coins, was arrested and recently uh, convicted to five years in prison because, and that is, uh, that's the reason they said, why he was convicted. When he built the tool, the, the software, he could have assumed that also money from illicit activities will flow into the system. And that's the reason why he was convicted. It's a little bit like saying, okay, you are a knife or a gun manufacturer. You should have known that this person is going to kill someone with that gun. And because of that, you are going to prison. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's not happening in, happening in, the, world, in, in the world like that, but with cryptocurrencies, it's happening. So next point why KYC and AML are basically a threat to us is that all kinds of databases are being leaked. They are being hacked. No data is secure. For instance, there was a case with Ledger, the hardware wallet manufacturer. In December 2020, um, it became known that they had a, a data leak. So the customer database was leaked, meaning if you had bought a hardware wallet to store your cryptocurrency safe on a Ledger hardware, hardware wallet, um, then Everyone now knows where you live, what's your name, what your telephone number is, or what your email address is. And that makes you the perfect target because people can assume that you own cryptocurrency and they know where you live. So what we are building, building at the moment is a digital panopticon. And that's basically a panopticon is a prison that was invented in England in the times of the Industrial Revolution where three guards were walking in circles in the building. And whenever they wanted to, they could look into the cells of the prisoners. And the prisoners never knew when the guard will come around. So basically, just imagine what kind of a cringe feeling this is. Uh, it almost like it suffocates me when I think about it. But this is what we're building in the digital world as well, and what we already have. And if we are not uh, normalizing the fact that Bitcoin can and should be used without KYC regulations or uh, know your customer databases, basically, then uh, everything we do will become transparent and no one of us will have any privacy anymore and no one will have the possibility anymore to protest for their rights or for the freedom of their people. And this is definitely not a thing we want to have. And that's why it's so important um, to use Bitcoin in a peer-to-peer -peer manner. Hello, my name is Anita Posch. And if you liked that video, please subscribe to my channel now to inspire me to create more content like this.
And if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, then sign up for my free weekly Bitcoin newsletter at anita.link/news.